So here's a thoroughly unscientific what if video, but one with a scientific North Star to shoot for. In this video, I wanna ask the question, what if there is a pattern, a mathematical power law that can tell us when we're going to get to artificial general intelligence? So what I'm getting at here is a question about AI progress. Is there a pattern between some aspects of capabilities that come out of AI models and something like parameter size or the amount of data that it looks at or something else that we could actually plot on an XY coordinate system and make a line through the data points that tells us when we might see some of the capabilities that are most risky for alignment. And if so, could that line be predicted by what we call in mathematics, a power law? But there's a lot of like social, socioeconomic, economical things that actually have power laws that you wanna predict. So why not start searching for one because if there is a power law that can describe capabilities and the layers of capabilities that are to come in the future then maybe that same power law would help us predict when we're going to see artificial general intelligence and after that artificial super intelligence so let's start by diving into that question a little more now the ultimate goal here is to figure out when will an artificial intelligent model reason beyond human understanding artificial general intelligence agi now this is the capability that we should be really worried about because it would mean that the system itself is smarter than us at that point a system would be so smart it could reason so well that it could easily reason outside of any box that we tried to constrain it into. And at this point, AGI would be the dominant intelligence on the planet. And we have no idea what that kind of world would even look like. It would be like a dog trying to predict how a human is going to behave. That's the kind of thing we should try to predict, be very aware of, be as prepared for as possible, and maybe something like this could help us understand when it's coming, which would help us prepare. So first, let's look at some of the capabilities that have come out of large language models and plot them next to their parameter size. So this super simple graph, on the X coordinate, you see the parameter size, how big the model is. On the Y coordinate, you get to see some generally emergent properties. For example, the first time that a large language model could complete and predict text, the model size was around 1.5 billion parameters. The first time that an LLM could write poetry and short stories. The model size was around 6 billion parameters. The first time a large language model demonstrated significant improvements in the way it could translate between languages showed up around the 7 billion parameter mark. The first time LLM started responding realistically to queries and context in the model was around 20 billion parameters. Now the first time large language models accurately started to read much more complicated things like papers and summarize them in simpler ways showed up around the 100 115 billion parameter mark. And the first time these LLMs demonstrated moral and ethical reasoning in the model was showing up around the 175 billion parameter mark. Now, of course, there's no real definition of what the emergent property is. It also always comes on somewhat of a scale where you see some examples early on and then they just become more reliable over time. So you can't take any of this as like really solid quantitative information. But the idea of just qualitatively thinking about things that seem really impressive and just plotting them against some other kind of quantitative metric to see if anything emerges is all we're doing right now. And when it comes to putting parameter size on the x-axis, there's nothing in particular that makes it so we should definitely use that metric. It could very well be data size, uh, the amount of time that it was fine-tuned, it could be the quality of the feedback, it could be a mix of all of those variables, but this is just a way to think about capabilities plotted against some other kind of metric. So for this example, just think of parameter size as adding more detail to the model. You can think about the smaller parameter size, more like a low resolution TV that would play like very simple pixelated video games. And the higher parameter size is more of like a high definition 4K TV that's playing like the latest video games. But technically parameters are more like little dials that get adjusted every time you learn from information. And what these big companies are doing is basically dumping a bunch of like a flow of data through the system. And that flow of data, the shape of it is adjusting these knobs and we're discovering the exact way to position all of these knobs so that these LLMs make amazing conversations. And they eventually seem to demonstrate these amazing abilities like doing simple mathematics and understanding moral reasoning and making jokes. Stuff that you just wouldn't think could ever be possible from just simply taking 
dials and adjusting them in a certain way, even if there is trillions of them. Now, the amount of dials you have can certainly make it more accurate, but that alone is not going to get you there. Like having a map with a lot of detail still needs to represent the territory well enough that the map makes sense. But for decades now, different companies and governments have been pouring in more and more data, increasing the parameter size, improving the learning algorithms, and collectively, all of that coming together, plus a lot of secret sauce, is starting to make these things really shine. But it's definitely clear that the best models on the market, like Llama 70B, OpenAI's language models for GPT, and Google's Gemini models, are incredibly huge. They're sort of secret how big the parameters are, but 70 billion for Facebook is definitely on the small end. There's a good chance that Gemini and OpenAI's GPT-4 are well above a trillion. And along the way of this decade-long growth of parameter size, we've seen different emergent abilities pop up. And the reason why I think this matters is that there is averages across populations for when humans are learning and different emergent abilities are expected to show up. For example, children don't always say their first word at the exact same time, but there is a bell curve of where you probably are gonna hear their first word. This is why we have expectations for when children should be speaking, learning to read, recognizing themselves in the mirror, and eventually, even when they start getting older, when they can become teenagers, we start thinking about them as citizens with the right to drink, the right to vote, the right to get a driver's license and drive a vehicle. And clearly we all know the person where getting their driver's license feels like it's coming too early, and then we know some other people where they're totally ready to drive and they seem responsible and willing to pay attention. So we have to put an exact number on it for the average of the population, but realistically there's variance and most people are just somewhere in the average. Now, unfortunately, we don't get the opportunity to discover artificial superintelligence over and over and over again and come to some kind of an average. But maybe if we start plotting what these emergent capabilities are, we can make a prediction. So if we're trying to say for the first time in history, when will this child have the responsibility that they need to drink alcohol, we can make some predictions along the way when they're five, 10, 15 years old, does it seem like the trajectory is getting us to a point where they could handle responsibly drinking at some point? And in the same way, we have this pattern where we're just going to continually add things like parameters and data size and feedback data to these systems. So can we start to plot that against the emergent properties and think about when we're gonna get to AGI? Might there be a relationship that can be described between capabilities and parameter size? There might not be, but there might be. And if there was, one way that you would likely describe this curve would be a power law. A power law simply describes the disproportional change in one variable in relation to another. For example, one power law that's just found out in nature is that on average, whenever the size of a city doubles, the average income of each person in that city also goes up, but it doesn't double. It only goes up by 15%. Now it'd be nice if it was a one-to-one -one relationship, you double the amount of people in a city and everybody gets twice the income, but it's not like that. And it can go the other direction too. You actually need less gas stations when you double a city. So 15% less gas stations are needed for each doubling of the population. Another interesting power law is the relationship between the size of an animal and how long it lives. Larger animals do tend to live longer than smaller animals, but there's actually a power law that can describe how much you can expect a larger animal to live based on how much bigger it is. But there's so many more power laws and they show up in all sorts of strange places. In linguistics, there's actually a power law that relates the rare words that show up very rarely in a book to the ones that are more common. Geologists have found patterns that relate the magnitude of an earthquake to the frequency of the earthquakes. There's power laws that relate the size of a planet to the amount of time that it takes to orbit the sun. In finance, market returns can often be described by power laws. Quantitative finance experts have a power law that describe that if a stock moves 10%, how much less likely that is than it moving 1%. And arguably the most famous power law of all, arguably just one that's a rule of thumb, a heuristic to live by, is the 80-20 rule. The pattern shows up in so many different facets of life, like how 20% of the people have 80% of the wealth, 80% of the work is done by 20% of the workers, and 20% of the people at a wedding do 80% of the dancing. Now there's no guarantee that we're gonna find any kind of power law to describe emergent capabilities, but we are very concerned with finding emergent capabilities, so it seems like something worth exploring. One way to identify a power law is simply just to put it on a log log plot. If the data makes a straight line, then you have a power law that you can write from it, and throwing this data together on a log log plot and finding a straight line was a total game changer. And the relationship between the size of a neural network in artificial intelligence, particularly 
in the context of a large language model like GPT-3 or GPT-4, and the capabilities that emerge from these models does indeed exhibit characteristics that are, let's say, reminiscent of a power law relationship with a whole bunch of nuances to talk about. So my thinking is, what if we get in there and do a better job of defining what an emergent property is? Maybe we put uh, much stricter definitions around it. Maybe we really try a bunch of different parameter sizes in between the major ones to see where exactly we can hone in on those emergent properties. Maybe there's some kind of predictive power, even vague predictive power might be helpful when something like AGI and ASI could be just so important to the future of humanity. And one of the main reasons I wanted to make this video was just to share this idea with you. I'd love to hear some feedback if you think it's kind of crazy, if you think power laws might be worth investing in. Maybe you could tell me more about why this doesn't make sense and it would be a waste of time. I would love to have that discussion in the comments below. For me, a lot of this was just that intuition that silicon-based uh, network systems are going to maybe emerge in the same way that biological systems of complex nature like our human brains did. And whenever you have a complex system that's simulating the world in some way, and then it starts simulating itself in that environment, what if there's patterns to first words, to identifying themselves as an agent, to learning about the way the agent can move in the environment, to then understanding the social context of other agents, and then eventually getting to these higher levels of intelligence uh, beyond and above humans. As a human, we don't want to cross that line until we're ready, and good chance we walk over it unwittingly without knowing and get ourselves into trouble. So let's start this conversation now. And one way to continue that conversation would be hitting that subscribe button. Help me get to my next goal, 10,000 subscribers. Thanks for watching.